Hey guys, today we're in the lab looking at how to do a titration. Today we're going to be doing a titration. Here I have my conical flask and my conical flask is on a white tile so I can clearly see the colour changes. Into this flask I'm going to be putting my sodium hydroxide and then over here I have my burette which is where my acid is going to be. Just here in the background you can see all of the, um, well, the two different indicators, phenylphalan on this side and methyl orange here with alkali endpoint acid alkali endpoint acid if you're not sure about what they look like in um, alkali acids or the endpoint it's always worth just doing this first and maybe keeping a reference so that you can have a look at it while you're doing the experiment but the first thing i need to do is to pop um 25 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid in here and what we have available is a ball um pipette and a long pipette that looks like this now you'll notice on your pipette there is a line just about here and this is where we are aiming to fill the pipette to what you do with a ball pipette is you press all the different buttons to suck up and empty what you need to do is hold this bit here squeeze all the air out when you let go of this that's going to keep that um all the air in there you need to put your pipette into the end now be really really careful when you do this do not do it like this facing towards you because what could potentially happen is that you slip and then you poke the pipette into your arm. We do not want that. So whether you're using a ball pipette or um, one with a, a runner on it, have it facing away from you. Make sure that you're not in any danger of slipping, um, cutting yourself and causing massive amounts of bleeding because, you know, I've told you before, I teach chemistry for a reason. I don't like the sight of blood. So um, we need to pop that in there. We need to pop that in there. Just going round is a nice way to get it in there quite securely now i have my uh, sodium hydroxide here what i'm going to do with this one to suck it up you press here the s that releases it and then to empty it you press that one there so i'm just going to squeeze that again pick up my um sodium hydroxide Now, you need to do this slowly, you need to do this carefully. You don't go over the line. So slowly, carefully, sucking this up and you want it to be exactly on that little line where you can see there. And once it gets past the bulb, it goes very quickly. So just do it in tiny, 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 tiny amounts until you get it there. Now I've had a lot of practice with this. If you don't do it first time, that's fine. Then we are going to need to place our, hydro um, our sodium hydroxide, sorry, into our conical flask. Again, chemistry is so often about patience just doing things slowly patiently and not rushing so this does take a bit of time to um drop out but that's that's absolutely fine you can just wait and make sure you get every last drop out at the end there. Um, right, now we have our sodium hydroxide in our conical flask, we can start the titration. Here is the bottom of our burette, and you'll notice that this here is in line, which means it's open. When you're filling it, you wanna turn it like that, so it is closed. If you try and fill it with a tap open, which somebody will do in every single glass, it will just go all over the floor. When you are filling a burette, you need to do it below head height. If you try and reach up and fill the burette when it's still on the desk, um, there's the potential risk of you slipping and pouring it all over yourself or breaking glass all over yourself. So put the bureau out on the floor, put the funnel in the top, make sure the tap's closed down there, and then you can start filling it. 
So into my burette, I'm pouring some hydrochloric acid. Now you may be using sulfuric acid or a different type of acid. That's absolutely fine, doesn't matter. I'm just using hydrochloric acid for simplicity's sake today. And you can see that I filled it so it's there. When you read a burette, you need to look for the bottom of the meniscus. So that is here. You can see that here is 11, here is 12, here is 0.5. So this is 11.1234. And this is, wobbly camera, this is exactly 11.4. In a titration on a burette, you can see whether it's exactly on the number or whether it's in between the numbers. This is the level of accuracy we are aiming for in a titration. You need to do it two decimal places. So this would be 11.40. So here we have our titration set up. We have our conical flask with our white tiles so we can see the colour change, our burette with the acid in, and what we're going to do is slowly let it out until we get to our end point, which we can see over here. Now, when you are doing a titration, you need to have one hand on the tap and the other hand needs to be swirling. Swirling. Now, if you the first time you do this, you can go quite quickly because we're just going to get a rough tighter. But after a while, um, your second and third goes, you're going to need to do it really, really slowly. You're going to need to go drop by drop, drop by drop, swirling in between each drop. So you've got quite a good control over the... Um, tap your swirling constantly this is a two-handed experiment you cannot do this one um, you cannot do this one quickly it involves patience and what we're looking for are concordant results that is results that are within 0 0.01 of each other so it literally is a drop by drop measurement um, so i'll just do this quickly and i'll show you what the end point looks like so here we go, we've um, got to the end point. It's always worth, if you're not sure what the end point's supposed to look like, having um, alkali, acid and end point set up over here. And then you can just compare it and see which one you're at.